what I want to do is take a few minutes talk about queuing science. And, and really what I'm trying to do for this class, the metrics class, is set the tone and the understanding of why we need to do a lot of things different. Why we're going to need to have measures of our metric to describe it that are a little different from the, the classic old line way we've done things. So really that's kind of the, the whole intent. This is um, hopefully will be a pretty simple it's introduction. If you're taking the design class also We'll get a lot more in depth. We'll do some real neat calculations. But the idea here is for us to get started and let's talk about how we would go about understanding cues and wait time. Well, first of all, cues are a function of a whole bunch of things, and we need to talk about that. So let's talk about something that hopefully we've all experienced. We, I think we've probably all been to a grocery store. And we've gotten some groceries, like in my case, I'll get sent to the grocery store a lot. And we get to check out. So let's, that, that's kind of the place we're going to focus on. And as you see in the picture, we've got a checkout person. We've got a full buggy. And what we're wanting to do is to kind of analyze this thing. So the checkout person is competent, well-trained, knowledgeable. we got a full buggy. And that competent, well-trained person can basically process that full buggy load in about eight minutes. Okay? Uh, now, we pay that person about $10,000 a year. And we're just kind of keeping the numbers pretty simple to make this easy for us to run the math. So we kind of start off, and this is typically what happens at grocery store. Check out persons, handling one person, things are going pretty good. And what begins to happen is we have more and more and more people lining up, getting in the line. And it always, always seems like that's where I show up. I've been sent to the store to get a gallon of milk. I've got the gallon in hand. I get in the line and I get there and I've got over a 30 minute wait. And, and what's going through my mind, you know, you don't know me too well yet, but you kind of get to know me. I don't have a lot of patience. So I'm thinking, is the beating I'm going to get standing in this line as bad as the beating I get at home when I don't bring the milk home? Well, what you're going to find is after I've been waiting a while, I tend to kind of pack my bag and head to the house. But before I do that, uh, probably in my past there were some ancestors that were in the Wild West because typically what I do is unbutton my coat, spread the jacket back, pull it back behind... And I'm kind of thinking probably this is a throwback to the Wild West when you had your six shooters and you, when you were getting ready to go to a gunfight, you'd pull your coat back so you could uh, get your six shooters ready. Well, typically that's what happens to me. Then I turn red in the face. Then my ears start to twitch. My head's about to pop off. I've been in this line forever. Now, the Advantage Grocery Store has above service sector, call centers, help desk, is they can see that my head's about to pop off. They see my ear just twitching up a storm. They see that red face. They see the coat pulled back, ready to make a scene. And what typically happens in a grocery store is that manager opens up a second line. Okay? And then everybody rearranges. We reshuffle. Now, things have improved. But, they've improved, but not a whole lot. I'm still in line. I've still got this one little item. Take just a flash to get processed. And what do you think's happening? i still got a long way. So my head's twitching more. My face is getting redder. And the grocery store manager realizes what's going on. So what he begins to do is he adds a third person. Now, have you ever called a call sign? And first words out of their mouth are, hello, you've reached blah, 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 call center, help desk, customer care. You're a valued customer. Please stay on the line. Your wait is 45 minutes. Well, is that a disconnect or what? If I was very valuable, I wouldn't be waiting on this line 45 minutes. So, 
kind of what's beginning to happen is, is everybody's frustrated. Now notice, in the scheme of things, the overall average wait time is about 10 minutes, and the cost is about $30,000, because we opened up three lines. Okay? Kind of with me, that makes sense. And um, The problem in a call center world, typically that is what most people view as the solution to every problem. I'm either going to add people or I'm going to remove people. Well, if that's the only solution, then it's no surprise that what a lot of companies did, we got bad service, long waits, poor performance. Well, if we're going to be poor, why don't we just go be poor cheap and we'll go to places like India? Okay, so come with me and see what's going on here. Well, decades ago, now you're probably thinking grocery stores have some other things. And it hasn't been that long. A couple of decades ago, there was a fellow who did some giving signs. He looked at the whiteboard, wiped everything clean, and what he said was, well, we got this long line. And he came up with an idea called an express line. And, and you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, that's pretty obvious. Everybody's done that. But see, I'm the odd duck. I have this engineer in me engineering traits and one of the things that I want to do all the time is I'll be standing line and I'll say, why does this work? Or why is this this way? Or why is the service bad? Well, the reason Express Lane works in a grocery store is not because it's 10 items or less. The reason it works, what they have done is they've clustered things of like kind together. Like we've got a full service line that's full buggy. <clears throat> and we've got another lane that is small items. Now, have you ever been to a place like Costco or Sam's? They too have an express line. But it's not 10 items or less. It's a whole two flats full for the business customer. Now, what we're doing is we're trying to put things of like kind together. Now, notice when I have the express lane and I move all the people with 10 items or less over into one lane, now I've got two lanes open, $10,000 each, and what you see here is my wait time where with three people was 10 minutes, now it's dropped down to an average of 9.9 .9 minutes. So, in the scheme of things, what I've done is reduce the average wait time and, ironically, reduce cost. Now, a whole bunch of things. I may have valued customers, a whole bunch of different ways I could do this, but the whole concept is what we're trying to do is to design a grocery store to minimize variation. Well, variation is the enemy in a call center. And what we want to do is engineer our center to minimize variation. That's number one. Number two, we want to manage our center with the idea of driving variation out. Now, notice what happens in a classic, hardworking, conscientious person who's working that checkout. The best employee we have, salt of the earth. What he will do, he'll blow through those three people. Two, three minutes later, he's finished. He's got an empty lane. Hardworking, conscientious person wants to do what? Help his buddy out. But if he does, what happens? What happens is we're now back to the high cost model. Now, a couple of things. This particular set of slides, I've got contrast, express lane, and a crude approach where everybody's trying to do everything. Well, a whole bunch of things. The crude approach is efficient. It keeps everybody busy. The express line is much more e effective. It has lower weights, 
And ironically, by not keeping everybody busy, I have a lower college. Whoa! How could this be? Keeping everybody busy has to be the best model, but it's not. Managing, designing, and now teaching my agents, teaching my checkout person about a little bit about queuing signs, and the reason we want that checkout person holding position is so that they're ready to work the homogeneous group of 10 items or less. Well, in a call center, there's a whole raft of things associated with homogeneous groups. I don't want to put too many different call types on a person. I, like we had a, uh, a help desk that uh, did copiers. Well, the copiers had mechanical components, they had photography components, and they had software components. Well, asking a person who's really good on mechanical stuff to fix systems and software person, uh, software issues may have been totally the wrong thing. So what we've got to do is design the center to make sure we're putting things of homogeneous groups together. Now that doesn't mean every call gets its own lane. Don't do that in grocery store. And what we've got to do is design this thing to make it work. So our basic starter with queuing science is Analyzing the average is real interesting. But what is the largest driver? Now listen carefully. The largest driver of every component of a call center is variability. How big a spread do we have? Length of calls. In other words, how long it takes us to process it. I wouldn't want to put a 30 second call with a one hour call. As a matter of fact, I was in the post office just a week or so ago. Standing in line, and, and pretty typically at our post office, that's what you do when you go to the post office. And there was a super agent, and everybody was doing everything. And this one agent was helping a lady buy some holiday uh, stamps. Except, looked to me like they had 50 different stamps, and they slowly went through and analyzed. And the guy did a great job but there was a whole bunch of different people. All I wanted was a stamp. Well, the idea here is if they had built express lines, and we call them express lines, but if they had designed the operation around reducing variability, she would have been serviced and everybody in that office would have been serviced better. So one of the things that we're going to focus a lot of attention on is how as part of our metric, are we going to monitor for every metric variability associated with that metric? Well, that kind of gets us started, kind of explains the why of a lot of things we're going to focus on on every video that we 